हेलो वेलकम बैक टू दिस सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन न्यूमेरिकल ऑप्टिमाइजेशन इन द लास्ट क्लास वी सॉ द इक्वलेंस बिटवीन एन एक्सट्रीम पॉइंट ऑफ अ फिजिबल सेट एंड द वर्टेक्स एंड द बेसिक फिजिबल सॉल्यूशन ऑफ अ लीनियर प्रोग्राम नाउ इन टू डिस क्लास वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द सोल्यूशन और an algorithm to get a solution of a linear program so uh, let us quickly relook re at uh, some of the topics that we uh, discussed in the last class so we started with the linear programming standard form which is of the type minimize c transpose x subject to x equal to b and x non negative and uh, a is a rank m matrix of size m by n and uh, we assume that x is a non degenerate basic feasible solution which corresponds to the basic variable set b and the non basic variable set n and uh, if b denotes the basis matrix then uh, ax equal to b can be written in the form bxb plus nxn equal to b so a is split into two sub matrices b and n and the corresponding components of x are xb and xn and they put together Uh, will give us this equation b x b plus n x n equal to b and uh, since b denotes the basis matrix that means the columns of b are linearly independent and it's of the size m by m we can always invert it and get a uh, solution x b which is of this form x b is equal to b inverse b minus b inverse n x n and a particular solution is by letting x n to be zero in this solution we get x b equal to b inverse b and x n equal to zero. and the objective function c transpose x can be written as the current objective function which is cb transpose b inverse b which we are going to denote by z bar plus cb bar transpose xb plus cn bar transpose xn now cb bar is zero and uh, cn bar is nothing but cn transpose minus cb transpose b inverse n these are called the relative cost factors uh, associated with a basis matrix b and the current objective function value is cb transpose b inverse b because Uh, cb bar is zero and xn is zero so the current objective function is nothing but z bar which is cb transpose b inverse b so we also assume that uh, uh, the feasible set of uh, this linear program is non empty and also slater's condition is satisfied that means that uh, the feasible set has non empty interior then under these conditions we had already seen that first order kkt conditions are necessary and sufficient at optimality so we write down the lagrangian of uh, this uh, objective uh, this optimization problem which is nothing but uh, l of x lambda mu now lambdas are the lagrangian multipliers associated with the inequality constraints and uh, mu's are the lagrangian multipliers corresponding to the equality constraints so the lagrangian function is the objective function c transpose x plus mu transpose b minus ax minus lambda transpose x now if you write down the kkt conditions uh, we'll see that uh, the first order kkt conditions at optimality are that the primal uh, x is primal feasible so which means that it should satisfy x equal to b and x non negative then the gradient of the lagrangian with respect to x should vanish at optimal up at optimal point x lambda mu uh, so that implies that uh, c minus a transpose mu minus lambda will be zero so which gives us a transpose mu plus lambda equal to c and complementary slackness condition lambda i x i equal to zero for all i now uh, there there are also non negativity constraints uh, that is lambda i is non negative for all i so all these conditions should be satisfied by any optimal point x lambda mu and uh, in today's class we will see how to get uh, a solution of uh, the linear program by making use of this optimality conditions now if x is a non degenerate basic feasible solution so let us write x as xb and xn as two parts of x where xb is strictly greater than 0 and xn equal to 0 so uh, 
So, as we saw at optimal x lambda mu, uh, since at, at any feasible x, basic feasible x, we are assuming that uh, there is a non degeneracy that means that x b is greater than 0. So, if that particular x is optimal, then what we want is that the lambda b should be 0 because of the complementary slackness condition and uh, since x n is 0, lambda n can be greater than or equal to 0. So, if we are given x, we will first find out the value of mu and see whether lambdas satisfy the KKT conditions. So, if they do satisfy KKT conditions, then we can claim that we have found the solution. Now, remember that mu's are the Lagrangian multipliers associated with equality constraints and therefore, they are unrestricted in sign. On the other hand, lambdas are the Lagrangian multipliers associated with uh, the inequality constraint of the type x greater than or equal to 0 and therefore, uh, lambdas are restricted in sign and uh, we make use of that to check whether a given point x lambda mu is a optimal point. And uh, therefore, we started with uh, a basic feasible point or basic feasible solution which is x b x n which uh, if it is optimal uh, lambda b has to be 0 and lambda n non negative. Now, uh, c is equal to a transpose mu plus lambda. Now, we will make use of this equation to get mu or in other words, if we as we split x into two parts x b and x n, we split c also into two parts c b and c n and uh, the a matrix we have already uh, split it into two parts b and n. So, the, the equation c equal to a transpose mu plus lambda can be written as c b is equal to b transpose mu plus lambda b and c n is equal to n transpose mu plus lambda n. Now, now if lambda b is equal to 0, that means that we can write C b is equal to b transpose mu and mu is equal to b transpose inverse C b. So, that gives us the value of mu. So, for a given x, we have found out mu. We have also, we also want lambda b to be 0, so that KKT conditions uh, would be satisfied and the aim is to check whether lambda n's are 0. So, by forcing lambda b to be 0, if we can get the lambda n to be greater than or equal to 0, then uh, the point x lambda mu would satisfy uh, the optimality conditions. Uh, so, by forcing lambda b to be 0, we have got mu and now the next step is to get lambda n. Now, lambda n is nothing but uh, C n minus n transpose mu and if we plug in this value of mu, what we get is that lambda n is equal to C n minus b inverse n transpose C b and that should be greater than or equal to 0. So, which means that the, the Lagrangian multipliers corresponding to the non-basic variables n, they should be non-negative. So, if we uh, uh, look at the steps that we followed, so we started with a basic feasible solution x which consisted of x b and x n where x b is greater than 0 and x n equal to 0. Now, in order to check whether this solution is optimal, what we need to do is that since x, uh, x b is greater than 0, we can force lambda b to be 0 because complementary slackness condition needs to be satisfied and uh, x n equal to 0 and therefore, lambda n has have to be non-negative and uh, by using the fact that lambda b equal to 0, we got the value of mu and we use that value of mu to find lambda n and now it is just a matter of checking whether lambda n is greater than or equal to 0 for all non-negative variables, uh, non-basic variables. So, the current basic feasible solution x is not optimal if there exists a non-basic variable say x q such that the corresponding Lagrangian multiplier is less than 0 or strictly negative. So, in such a case, we can definitely say that the current solution, uh, current basic feasible solution is not optimal. Now, there is another way to look at this and uh, that depend that 
justification is based on the cost of the objective function. So, if we can show that uh, by making one of the non basic variables a basic variable, we can improve the objective function. So, that means that there is a possibility of reduction in the objective function value, which means that the current uh, basic feasible solution is not an optimal solution. So, let us see how to do that. Uh, so, x is feasible implies that x equal to b and x non negative. Uh, so, by making use of uh, the components of a as b and n, we can write this as b x b plus n x n equal to b and therefore, b is x b is equal to b inverse b minus b inverse n x n. We have already seen this earlier. Now, let us look at objective function value of at, uh, at x which is c transpose x. Now, as uh, the uh, as the variables are split into two components basic and non basic, the objective function vector c is also split into two components c b and c b c n. So, c transpose x becomes c b transpose x b plus c n transpose x n and uh, by using this value of x b, we can write uh, this as c b transpose b inverse b minus b inverse n x n plus c n transpose x n and uh, this is nothing but c b transpose b inverse b plus c n transpose minus c b transpose b inverse n x n and this is nothing but the lambda n transpose that we had seen earlier. So, these are also this is also called the relative cost factor corresponding to the non basic variable. And uh, remember that the relative cost factor corresponding to the basic variables was 0, the C b bar transpose that we saw earlier. And if x n is equal to 0, the current objective function is C b transpose b inverse b. Now, this equation gives us a clue about optimality. Now, if there exists some non basic variable say x q such that lambda q is less than 0. Uh, note that uh, all the non basic variables are 0. So, x q also is 0, but if lambda q happens to be negative, then there will be a way to improve the objective function by making x q to be positive. So, let us see. So, suppose that there exists a non basic variable x q in the set n such that lambda q is less than 0. Now, since x q is in the non basic variable set, uh, the current value of x q is 0. Now, if we look at objective function, objective function at x will be C b transpose b inverse b plus lambda q x q. So, let us assume that uh, we are not interested in the remaining non basic variables. Th their lambdas could be negative, positive or 0, but we are at the moment interested only in one non basic variable which is x q for which lambda q is less than 0. So, the objective function can be written as C b transpose b inverse b plus lambda q x q and remember that lambda q is less than 0. So, currently the value of x q is 0. Now, if we increase x q from 0 to some positive quantity, the objective function value is going to decrease. Of course, we will move from x to some other new point in that process, but there is a scope for improvement in the objective function or decrease in the objective function if x q is increased from 0 to some positive quantity. And And therefore, uh, if x q is changed from 0 to some positive quantity, uh, we can say that x q is made a basic variable. Now, we have seen earlier that uh, a solution of a linear program uh, lies at the boundary point and in particular, if it lies at the boundary point uh, and if uh, the solution set is convex and compact, then the solution lies at the extreme point also. So, so from a current extreme point, if we want to move to an adjacent ex extreme point by making x q as our uh, basic variable, then one of the existing basic variables has to be 
eliminated or made non basic so there will be a swap of a basic and a non basic variable between the sets uh, b and n so that we can move from one vertex to an adjacent vertex and in the process we will decrease the objective function value now how to find out a variable which can or a basic variable which can become non basic now let us assume that xq is made a basic variable and uh, uh, we are interested in finding out some existing basic variable xp which belongs to the set b that needs to be made non basic because we know that at any vert at every vertex for a given linear program there are m variables corresponding to the basis set and n minus m variables corresponding to the non basic set so when we move to when we want to bring in a non basic variable into the basis vector set one of the existing basic variables has to be made non basic and how that can be done that's the question that we would like to address now so again let us relook at uh, the system ax equal to b and uh, bxb plus nxn equal to b so we have xb is equal to b inverse b minus b inverse n xn now uh, we are not interested in the entire b inverse n matrix at this moment uh, because we are concentrating mainly on the uh, on, on one variable which is xq so xq is currently non basic so we are interested in the qth column of this b inverse n matrix so we can write xb as b inverse uh, b minus b inverse n uh, dot i mean the qth column of b inverse n xn so which is given here so you have x1 to xm as the basic variables without loss of generality now b1 bar to b m bar denote b inverse b and uh, since it is a non degenerate basic feasible solution we can say that b bar is greater than 0 and what what we are interested in is the qth column of b inverse n so that is denoted by b inverse n dot slash q uh, dot comma q so which means that we consider all the rows in the qth column of b inverse n multiplied by xq so at the moment we are interested only in the very xq variable of the non basic vector uh, variable set now let us look at this equation so we have uh, xb is equal to b inverse b minus b inverse n xk so this is the uh, equation that we have now so what we are looking at now is a uh, dependence of the basic variables xb on the variable xq which is currently zero so let us take xq and uh, on the vertical axis we will consider all basic variables now uh, remember that currently xq is equal to 0 because it is a non basic variable so xq belongs to n and uh, it is a non basic variable currently now there will be uh, a var variation in xb if xq is made a basic variable or in other words if xq is changed from the current value of 0 to some positive value there will be a change in xb and uh, that depends on 
the corresponding entry in the B inverse N matrix, its qth column. So, for example, uh, one possibility is that uh, for a particular variable, so let us call this variable as uh, x1. So, so here we have v1 bar, v1 bar is nothing but the uh, first entry in the vector b inverse b and that corresponds to the first basic variable and without loss of generality we are assuming that the first m variables are basic variables. So, so what it means is that as x q is increased from 0 to some positive value, the basic variable x, uh, x 1 also increases. So, remember that uh, these are the basic variables x b that we are plotting on the y axis. So, so, so as x q increases, x 1 also increases. Now, uh, there could be another case where say for a variable 2. So, this is corresponding to variable 2. So, what it means is that as x q increases, the variable x 2 decreases and comes to 0 at this value of x q. Now, there could be a situation where uh, suppose that this corresponds to the variable x 3. Now, x 3 behaves in a similar way to x 2 in the sense that as x q increases, the variable x 3 decreases. So, this is b 3 bar and this value is b 2 bar. So, you will see that as x q is made a basic variable by make increasing it, uh, increasing its value from 0 to some positive quantity, x 1 increases and both x 2 and x 3 decrease. Now, uh, and both become 0 at certain value of x q. So, for example, x 3 becomes 0 when x q achieves this value. Now, among all these variables, which are the candidate variables to be made non-basic. Now, certainly x 1 is going to increase as x q increases. So, x 1 cannot be a candidate variable to be included uh, to be included in the set n or to be excluded from the basic variable set because it is not going to become 0 as x q increases. On the other hand, x 2 and x 3, they become candidate variables as uh, x q becomes a basic variable. So, they are the candidate variables to be made non-basic. Now, out of uh, <coughs> out of x 1, x 2, x 3, you will see that these are the candidates where b minor uh, b inverse So, b inverse n q was greater than 0. So, which means that the line, uh, if you consider this as a line where uh, x q denotes the horizontal axis and the x 2 denotes the vertical axis, then that, that line has a negative slope. So, which means that b inverse n has to be positive. So, similarly, b inverse n that was also greater than 0. So, so, the candidate basis vectors which possibly could be made non-basic is determined based on the whether the corresponding entry in the B inverse N matrix is positive or negative. So, for the variable x 1, the B inverse N 
1 comma q or the uh, first entry in the qth column of B inversion matrix is negative. So, which means that the line x b is equal x 1 is equal to b 1 bar plus some quantity into x 1 has a positive slope. On the other hand, for these two variables uh, x 2 and x 3, this line has a negative slope and therefore, these are the candidates which can be made non-basic if x q is made basic. Now, out of these candidates, there could be several more candidates like this. So, out of all these candidates, which one do we choose? So, clearly we will see that uh, we will choose that basic variable which reaches the objective function uh, with which reaches the 0 value first. So, clearly in this case where we have only 3 variables x 3 reaches 0 first compared to x 2 because if x q is increased further then x 3 becomes non negative uh, non positive or negative and uh, therefore, it will not remain feasible and therefore, we should choose this point where x q uh, or x q is increased up to this point. So, that x 3 becomes 0 and since x q is now positive x q can become a basic variable and x 3 which was in the previous iteration a uh, basic variable since it has attained a value of 0 it will become a non basic variable. So, we are going to see this now. So, the x p is chosen based on the uh, qth, uh, entries in the qth column of the B inverse n matrix. In particular, x p can be chosen such that B inverse n p q has to be greater than 0. So, that x p can uh, decrease if x q increases. So, which means that if x q is increased from 0 to some positive value, x p can be decreased from a current positive value to a value 0, which means that x p can be made non-basic while making x q a basic variable. So, the natural question is that how to choose the basic variable x p to be made non-basic. So, we saw earlier that uh, we choose all the entries in the qth column of B inverse N matrix which are positive and collect all those variables. Let us denote them by B hat q. So, B hat q denotes the set where uh, denotes the set of candidate basis vectors which could be made non-basic. Now, among all those variables which are candidate basic vectors, we will try to choose that basic vector which attains the value of 0 first or in other words x q will be assigned to the minimum of b bar j minus b inverse n j q. So, if we substitute x p to be 0 we will get a value of x q and uh, among all those possible values of x q we will choose that value of x q such that the one of the basic variables becomes 0 first as we saw in the illustration earlier. So, x q will be b p bar minus uh, divided by b inverse n p q. So, now if we do this, there are some possibilities that if we cannot get a non empty set b hat q, then the problem is unbounded. So, which means that we can increase 
द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स क्यू विदाउट रिमूविंग एनी ऑफ द बेसिस वेक्टर्स एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन वैल्यू गोज टू माइनस इंफिनिटी और द प्रॉब्लम इज अनबाउंडेड सो इफ द प्रॉब्लम इज बाउंडेड देन एक्स क्यू कुड बी फाउंड यूजिंग दिस फॉर्मूला और इन अदर वर्ड्स इफ बी हैड क्यू इज नॉन एमटी देन वी कैन गेट अ वेरिएबल टू बी मेड नॉन बेसिक स्नो लेटर समराइज द स्टेप्स दैट वी हैव सीन अर्लियर remember that we started with a basic feasible solution which is xb xn with respect to the basis matrix b now if lambda n which is cn minus b inverse n transpose cb if it is less than or equal to 0 that means the relative costs associated with the non basic variables are negative for at least one uh non basic variable then we choose one non basic variable xq such that lambda q is less less than 0 uh, remember that when we say lambda less than or equal to 0 so which means that there exists at least one non basic variable whose ne- uh, relative cost is negative and among all those variables whose relative costs are negative we choose one and denote it by lambda q now having chosen a variable or having chosen a non basic variable to be made basic the next step is to determine the variable or the basic variable to be made non basic and for that purpose we find out the matrix b hat q uh, uh, i'm sorry b, uh, the set b hat q uh, and that set is obtained by f- finding out all the basic variables for which b inverse nth entry in the qth column uh, is greater than 0 or for all the basic variables x is such that the jth entry in the qth column of b inverse n matrix is greater than 0 and if that set is non empty then the basic variable to be made non basic is obtained by finding out the minimum of b bar mi- uh, divided by b inverse n j q where xj belongs to b hat q and that minimum value is given by the pth basic variable which will be made non basic or which reaches the value of 0 first when xq is increased from 0 to some positive quantity now once we do this what we need to do is that we need to update all the basic variables and uh, that is done by for every basic variable xi we update it as bi minus b inverse n iq into xq so so if you see that this you will realize that uh, when i is equal to p we'll be updating xp to be bp bar minus b inverse n pq into bp bar minus b inverse n pq and which will make xp to be zero so this update will automatically make xp to be zero this update will make xq to be positive and the remaining basic variables get updated using this and remember that uh, since we have chosen uh, xp to be made non basic that means that there will be uh, a point where xp becomes 0 as xq increases and that is the first point where xp becomes 0 and the rest of the non basic variables will remain 0 so in the entire step what we did was we increase xq to a positive quantity uh, note that both this numerator and denominator are positive so x we increase xq to a positive quantity made it a basic variable by this update we made xp zero so that it becomes a non basic variable and there other basic variables they either increase or decrease Depen- depending upon the uh, sign of b inverse n but none of them will go to zero the next step that we uh, want to do is to swap xp and xq from the 
sets b and n just to indicate that now xp has become a non basic variable and xq which was non basic earlier has now become a basic variable and uh, it, this way of uh, in, uh, bringing in a basic uh, a non basic variable and uh, leaving out one basic variable has a nice geometrical interpretation and what it uh, denotes is that uh, it basically denotes how to move from one extreme point of the feasible set to an adjacent extreme point so that the objective function value decreases. So, remember that we have chosen a variable x q to be brought into the basis vector set based on the fact that uh, C b transpose b inverse b plus lambda q x q can be made negative if x q is made positive or it is a variable for which the relative cost uh, factor lambda q is negative. So, so, we have ensured that the objective function is going to decrease if we make sure that uh, x q is uh, increased, but then to move to the adjacent extreme points uh, one of the adjacent extreme points what we need to do is that we want we need to make one of the basic variables a non basic variable and that is done using this formula. So, this uh, summary of steps has a nice geometric interpretation also and if we look at our example which we saw in the last class to, the problem is to minimize minus 3 x 1 minus x 2 subject to x 1 plus x 2 less than or equal to 2 x 1 less than or equal to 1 and x 1 x 2 non negative. So, you will see that uh, this is a uh, compact convex set the feasible set is a compact convex set. Uh, the solution exists at one of the extreme points. Now, there are four extreme points or four vertices for this feasible set and uh, if, if we consider the point B suppose, then if from B if, if we go to point A, then the objective function value increases. On the other hand from B if we go to point C, the objective function value decreases and at C both the adjacent points have higher objective function value than the objective function value at C which was which is minus 4. So, therefore, the solution to this problem is x 1 equal to 1 x 2 equal to 2. So, these are the basic uh, variables and this is also an optimal solution. Now, compare this optimal solution with uh, the neighboring uh, vertices objective function values and also the basis vectors. So, you will see that in moving from B to C, the variable uh, x 2 which was non basic here is made basic and variable x 3 which, which was basic is made non basic. Similarly, from this that the variable x 1 which was non basic is made basic while moving from D to C. Now, let us try to get uh, an algorithm to solve this pro, uh, linear program in standard form. Now, uh, let us assume that uh, we are given a basis matrix B uh, which is associated with the basis vector set B and uh, the basic feasible solution x B is equal to B inverse B and x n equal to 0 and assume that uh, the so basic feasible solution is non-degenerate. We assume that x B is greater than 0. Now, if any of the B's are negative then by uh, making some appropriate uh, transformation one can make sure that the initial basic feasible solution x b is always greater than 0. Now, we know that the objective function value is 
C B transpose B inverse B because X n is 0. So, C n transpose X n is 0. So, at a basic feasible solution C B transpose B inverse B gives us the objective function value. Then the relative cost factors corresponding to the basic variables are 0 and the corresponding uh, cost factors for the non basic variables are C n minus B inverse N transpose C B. Now, can we use this uh, information and uh, get get a way or find a way so that this in, uh, the entire information is compactly available in the form of say matrix. So, by looking at the matrix we should be able to find out what is B inverse B what is uh, or what is the current basic feasible solution, what is the objective function value which is C B transpose B inverse B and what are the relative cost factors associated with the non basic variables. And remember that the relative cost factors associated with the basic variables have to be 0. So, if we have this information available then that easily tells us whether we have reached the optimal solution. Uh, if we have reached the optimal solution then lambda n have to be greater than or equal to 0 for all non basic variables. And the, if that is the case then the current uh, basic variables are x b equal to b inverse b. So, these, these give us the optimal solution and the optimal cost will be C b transpose b inverse b. So, at a time if all these three pieces of information are available then we can easily find out whether the given feasible solution is an optimal solution. And this also would possibly help us to find out if suppose lambda n is not greater than or equal to 0 that means that there exists a non basic variable for which the Lagrangian multiplier is negative or which has a negative cost factor then we should also be able to find out what is the basic variable that needs to be made non basic so that the qth basic non basic variable can be made basic. So, let us see how to do that. So, let us arrange the basic and non basic variables in the form of a matrix. So, with again without loss of generality we assume that the first m variables are basic variables. The next n minus m variables are non basic variables and then we have a column to indicate the right hand side of this. Now, first we write the matrix B associated with the basic variables, matrix N associated with the non basic variables and then the corresponding uh, vectors in the objective function. So, C transpose is split into C B transpose and C N transpose and this entry is currently kept 0. Now, you will see that this set of rows correspond to the basic variables and uh, what we want to do is that we want to find out if the current feasible solution is a basic feasible solution that is x b greater than 0 and x n uh, equal to 0. So, from this matrix we should be able to get what is the current basic feasible solution and that is x b equal to b inverse b and we know that x n equal to 0. So, we do not have to worry about that part. So, how do we get b inverse b? So, let us do some uh, matrix operations. So, multiply this uh, first m rows or the matrix b by b inverse. So, which will make it a identity matrix then this matrix will become b inverse n matrix and this will be this entry will be b inverse b. So, so if the first m rows correspond to the they denote the basic variables also the first m columns denote the basic variables. So, x b is b inverse b. So, the current solution uh, or the current basic feasible solution is easy to obtain using this that x b is equal to b inverse b and 
x n equal to 0. Now, we also want the non basic uh, variables cost factors. So, that is C n transpose minus B inverse uh, minus C B transpose B inverse n. So, what we do is that we multiply the the m by m matrix i um, the m by m matrix here by C B transpose and subtract it from this. So, what we get is C B transpose minus C B transpose i which is nothing but C B transpose minus C B transpose and which is 0. And uh, if we multiply pre multiply B inverse N by C B transpose and subtract it from C N transpose then what we get is C N transpose minus C B transpose B inverse N and uh, here we get minus C B transpose B inverse B. So, now this is the information that we are looking for. So, this matrix gives us all the information that is needed to check whether a given feasible point is optimal given basic feasible point is optimal. So, for example, as we saw earlier that x b is equal to b inverse b. So, this the last column <coughs> the last column denotes the value of x b and as I mentioned earlier c n transpose minus c b transpose b inverse n is nothing but lambda n transpose. So, this allows us to check whether the relative cost factors of non basic variables are non negative. Now, this 0 denotes the relative cost factors of the basic variables. Remember that the first m columns here are associated with basic variables. So, the relative cost factors of basic variables are 0, relative cost factors of non basic variables is C n transpose minus C b transpose b inverse n, and then in the last entry in this matrix is minus C B transpose B inverse B. Now, from this last entry we can easily find out what is C B transpose B inverse B which is basically the negative of the entry in this uh, uh, particular row and column and that gives us the current objective function value. So, the basic feasible solution the relative cost factors associated with uh, non negative uh, non basic uh, variables and the objective function value they all can current objective function value they all can be obtained by using this matrix so let us see uh, an example again the same example that we saw to get a graphical solution to the problem So, let us first write the linear program in standard form by introducing the slack variables for the two constants. So, now we have x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 2 and x 1 plus x 4 equal to 1. So, this is the linear program in standard form because it is of the type minimize c transpose x subject to a x equal to b x catalog equal to 0. Now, uh, one can easily determine its uh, initial basic feasible solution. So, what we need to do is that uh, we can just take uh, x 3 to be 2 and x 4 equal to 1 or if you write it in the form of a x equal to b, then we take a sub matrix of matrix A which is an identity matrix. So, if you write the matrix A for this uh, system of equations, so it will have 2 columns and 4 rows. So, the first row is 1 1 1 0 and the second row is 1 0 0 1. So, the last two columns of the matrix A they correspond to an ident uh, or the last 2 by 2 matrix uh, of the matrix A 2 by 2 sub matrix of the matrix A uh, happens to be an identity matrix. So, we can easily get the initial basic feasible solution to be x 3 equal to 2 and x 4 equal to 1 by setting x 1 and x 2 to 0 or making x 1 and x 2 to be non basic. So, as I mentioned that this is the A matrix that we have got uh, associated with this uh, constraint set and uh, 
the last two columns basically denote the identity matrix. So, last 2 by 2 matrix of A and that gives us the basic feasible solution. So, this row corresponds to x 3 and this row corresponds to x 4 in this particular uh, matrix. This is also called tableau. So, x 1 equal uh, x 3 equal to 2 and x 4 equal to 1 is the current basic feasible solution x 1 and x 2 are 0. And here the relative cost factors of uh, basic variables is 0 and the relative cost factors of the non basic variables are negative. Okay. So, which means that the current feasible solution is not an optimal solution. Now, to show it geometrically, we have the point A uh, where x1 and x2 are 0 and x3 and x4 are 2 1. So, so the uh, basic variables are x3 and x4 and the non basic variables are x1 x2 and the objective function value is 0 and that is what we saw from the tableau. Now, the relative cost factors associated with the basic variables are negative. So, we can choose any of these two variables to be made basic. Now, suppose we choose x 1 to be made basic. So, that is indicated here by incoming basic variable x 1 because it has a negative cost factor. Now, once we choose x 1 to be an incoming basic variable, we need some basic variable to be made non basic. Now, currently x 3 and x 4 are basic variable. So, if we look at the column associated with this minus 3, then you will see that all the entries are uh, positive. So, so this is the uh, column in the matrix B inverse N that is what we are looking at. So, what we do is that we determine the value of B bar by B inverse N. So, 2 by 1 and 1 by 1 and among them we choose the one which has the lowest value. This is also called ratio test. So, between the two ratios 2 by and, and 2 by 1 and 1 by 1, this ratio is the least which is shown by green. So, the outgoing variable is corresponding to this row and this row corresponds to the variable x 4. So, x 4 becomes an outgoing basic variable. So, we have incoming non basic variable which is x 1, outgoing basic variable which is x, x 4. Now, the next step is to make sure that this uh, column entire uh, this column corresponds to the uh, should be made similar to the column in the x fourth variable case. So, that means that this entry should be made 0 and this entry is 1 and then the relative cost of that basic variable because it is going to uh, become basic variable should be made 0. So, this is done using some matrix transformations. So, for example, what we can do is that subtract the first row from the second row. So, we get 0 and then the remaining quantities. Then uh, subtract 3 times this row to the last row. So, 3 into 1 plus minus 3 will make it 0. So, which means that the basic variable cost, the relative cost of the basic variable is made 0. And now, there will be corresponding changes in uh, the column of x 4. So, now, now if we take, uh, if we look at the identity sub matrix in this, 
you will see that we will get x1 and x3 as the identity sub matrix of this and which means that x1 and x3 are basic variables. Uh, the value of x3 is 1, value of x1 is 1 uh, and x2 and x4 are non-basic. So, x3 remains basic, x4 which was basic earlier is now made non-basic and x1 which was non-basic earlier is made basic and uh, it was just ensured that the identity sub matrix of the this matrix is corresponding to the basic variables x1 and x3. Now, this entry is 3, so which is which means that the current objective function value is minus 3. So, we have the basic feasible solution which is uh, x3 equal to 1 and x1 equal to 1, the current objective function value is minus 3 and the relative cost of the non-basic variable x2 is negative. So, let us see this uh, uh, geometrically. So, we have the current basic feasible solution which is x1, x3 to be 1, 1 and x2, x4 to be 0, 0. Current objective function value is minus 3 and this is indicated here. So, which means that by making x1 to be basic and removing x4 from the basic variable set we were able to move from the point A to the point B in this feasible re region and not only that, we also decrease the objective function value from 0 to minus 3 in moving that. So, you will see that now x1 and x3 are the basic variables and x2 and x4 are non-basic. Now, the same procedure needs to be followed and uh, we will see that in the next class. Thank you.